I wanted to talk a little bit uh, as we start here about how it's gonna run. It's not uh, a typical seminar. I tried to make what I would consider uh, a miniature version of one of our classes at the school, right? And I've taken pieces from uh, three different classes ultimately. So each day will be kind of a chunk, uh, an encapsulated version of one of our longer classes. Uh, the format is very similar to the way we run classes uh, at our school in California. So it's more like uh, a class than it is a traditional seminar where people come in and you work their dogs kind of wherever they are um, and help people troubleshoot. We will have some discussions of troubleshooting and that kind of thing, but we're gonna present specific material. So each day we'll have lecture portions where I'll kind of talk about certain topics, uh, demonstrations where we'll just kind of show how they're applied. And then we've chosen dogs, so any of the people that were picked for working slots, we've chosen dogs to illustrate those points. So dogs that were either working on the things we're talking about or potentially dogs that were having problems with some of the things that we're talking about. So uh, we can actually show troubleshooting or the, where the common difficulties are in some of these things. Today, uh, we're gonna cover our communication system and engagement. So tomorrow, and I'll talk about what that entails a little bit. Tomorrow we're gonna talk about principles of motivation, right? So how we develop motivation. Um, and then on Saturday, we're gonna talk uh, about what I call finishing work or troubleshooting, uh, some of the more kind of advanced concepts as you're putting things together and you're finishing dogs. Um, there's a lot of discussion these days about uh, differences between sport dog training and pet dog training, and um, people are considering these things different worlds. If you hang around uh, me enough, I don't, you'll re recognize pretty quickly, I don't look at them as different disciplines or different worlds. Dog training is dog training. The same principles apply. It's, a l it's like a recipe, a little more of this, a little less of this, but we're doing the same kinds of things. So a lot of the principles here as we go along I'll allude to, hey, if you were training pet dogs, you might not build the same amount of motivation, might not create the same amount of arousal here uh, as you would with a sport dog, but all the basic principles are the same. Of course, you might be teaching the dog different behaviors, but the way dogs learn, how we communicate with them, how we manipulate them, how we use rewards, how we add pressure to our work is really the same regardless. You have a different finished product, a different thing you're trying to build, but it's the same principle. And so. I dislike, you'll find out very quickly, people in dog training uh, camping up, right? There's this tendency in dog training for people to hang with their groupies, like the reward-based people only hang with the reward-based people, the e-collar guys only hang with the e-collar guys, the agility people don't talk to the protection sport people, the pet dog people don't think the tracking people have anything to offer them. I don't like that. I've learned so much over the years in dog training by hanging out with people that thought about training differently than I did. Right? and did different disciplines, and that opened my eyes to lots of methodologies that I've gotten to put into my toolbox over the years. And so I would encourage everyone to be open-minded as you go through your dog training journey. Uh, don't shut yourself off to certain types of disciplines. Even if you, you find a trainer that, doesn't, that does a lot of things that you don't like, you learn something from that. Like, you know, I don't want to approach things that way, or I think maybe there's a better way. And I found that we have a tendency now, this discussion versus kind of, this discussion of new training versus old school, traditional kinds of training. We run the risk a little bit of kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, as it will. Just because techniques are older doesn't mean they're not effective and they're not useful in certain situations. So people tend to look for what's shiny and new all the time instead of what is basically good dog training on its, on its most base level. And so some of the techniques we'll talk about are kind of what's considered progressive right now, for sure, what's new and, and interesting, what people are doing to manipulate dogs in higher levels of competition. And some of it's very just good, solid, traditional dog training, right? And um, I don't want to lose tools. At school, lots of people use uh, uh, Keeler method or Kohler method of dog training as sort of the old school training to dump on all the time, right? But there are techniques that I learned when I, I learned to train that way when I started in dog training. There wasn't any reward-based training, right? When I was a kid when I started, there was none of that. Nobody was using food and toys or any of those kinds of things to train. Uh, everything was done with a six-foot lead and a choke chain, and the dogs learned what to do by learning what not to do. You were physically manipulating them into positions and that sort of thing. And 
although we don't train that way from the ground up anymore, there are things that I learned while doing that that I find useful today still. I don't have to use them as often, but when I do, it's useful. And so it, don't discard the good uh, just in quest for what's new, right? Dog training operates on a certain set of principles, and I'll try whenever possible to not close myself off to ideas just because I, uh, there's something about that training that I don't like. So I would ask you to do the same thing as, we move for, as you move through or forward through your journey.